Investigators from two separate sheriff's offices were searching for William Ray McKee when officers shot him last night. I'll explain why coming up. Thieves hit half a dozen businesses in Lexington, the latest on a spike in summer crime. We continue with some ugly weather out there across most of the area this evening, but we're tracking a little better stuff as we roll our way into Tuesday. That and the extended forecast that turns stormy just ahead. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. We are tracking a traffic alert right now. A busy road here in Lexington is shut down after a bad crash. An SUV and a car collided on Russell Cave Road at Radcliffe Road. This is video just in from the scene. It appears the SUV T-boned the car. The fire department is using the jaws of life to cut one of the victims out of the car. Two people in the car and three from the SUV were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Again, Russell Cave Road is closed in both directions at Radcliffe Road. He was wanted in two counties, suspected in several crimes, and now he's recovering at UK Hospital after being shot by police. Today, investigators identify the man wounded in the officer involved shooting last night in Scott County. It happened along the Elkhorn Creek near Lemons Mill Road and Newtown Pike. The sheriff's office says they received a tip William Ray McKee was hiding out at a campsite. WKYT's Sean Moody is tracking the investigation in our top story at five. We've learned that two different agencies were investigating William Ray McKee when the shooting happened here in these woods. The Scott County Sheriff's Office was looking for him in connection with the stolen weapon. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office suspected him in a gas station robbery. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office released this surveillance video last week. You can see a man reaching into a gas station cash register with a sock over his hand and grabbing money. Investigators nicknamed him the Sock Bandit. The Scott County Sheriff said his deputies recognized the man as William Ray McKee. Mr. McKee has a uh, huge criminal background just in this county that we're aware of. They were looking for McKee in a stolen weapon investigation, and they said he's a person of interest in a couple of burglaries. Two. Um, Specific ones would be Old Friends Horse Farm and uh, Valkyrie Stud Horse Farm. He was definitely a person of interest due to the fact that he worked for a brief time for both of those farms at the time of these uh, thefts from the farms. Sheriff Tony Hampton said they got word that McKee was hiding out in the woods along the North Elkhorn Creek yesterday. They called for help from state police and Georgetown police when they went looking. Ultimately, uh, contact was made with Mr. McKee, and as we know, a firearm was displayed uh, towards law enforcement on scene, and uh, it did result in a shooting. State police say McKee aimed the gun at officers. Officers from all three agencies fired. It's unclear how many times McKee was hit. At last check, he was in critical but stable condition. A state police said there was also a woman here at this campsite with McKee when the shooting happened. She is not facing any charges. In Scott County, Sean Moody, WKYT. No officers were hurt in that incident. When it comes to weather, this is not June weather. It's wet and cool out there, and we didn't even make it out of the 50s this afternoon in the Lexington area. Yeah, showers, even some storms are still in parts of the state. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the rain on the first alert defender. Yeah, a little on the ugly side out there, guys, to say the least, but soaking rains across most of central and eastern Kentucky out there today. Look at some of the big winners or losers. All about perspective on the rainfall. Harrodsburg. 1.34 inches of water. Lexington, just a shade under an inch, three quarters of an inch roughly. Winchester, Paris into Jackson. Some of those numbers may climb a little more as we go through the evening. One of our weather watchers, Ron Malinowski, up in Georgetown, 58 degrees. He came in just a little shy of a half inch of rain. It's one of those days, the farther north and northwest that you go, the lighter the rainfall amounts. Right now, Lexington, still cloudy skies, the chilly temperatures. It is 57 degrees with full overcast, a little sprinkle, some areas of drizzle. Northerly winds right now at around 9 miles per hour. We should be close to 80 for a high temperature this time of year. Speaking to just how cold it is, we actually hit 62 degrees just after midnight. That's been the high temperature for the day. Since daylight, we haven't been out of the 50s in Lexington. This is likely now to go down. As the coldest June high temperature in Lexington since back in 1967. You're talking almost 50 years since we've had a June day in Lexington that had a high temperature this cold.
crazy, huh? Live first alert defender. Beginning now to see a decrease in the overall steady rains across the I-75 corridor. Still some raindrops here across southern. Southeastern Kentucky, a heavier burst here or there down the Mountain Parkway corridor and eastbound on 64. But overall, the low clouds are going to be awfully tough to scour out as we go through tonight and into tomorrow. So it's a damp and chilly evening, then, guys. Temperatures, humidity levels start to rise. You know what that's going to lead to? Threats for showers and thunderstorms that highlight or low light seven day forecast here coming up. Wet weather played a role in several crashes in Lexington this morning. About 11, police say the driver of an SUV lost control and flipped in the southbound lanes of Interstate 75 near the northern split. The SUV, which was pulling a trailer, ended up on the opposite side of the interstate but did not interfere with northbound traffic. There were no injuries. Lexington police are investigating a half dozen burglaries that happened overnight. And while detectives don't necessarily believe all the crimes are connected, they do want to warn business owners to be on the lookout. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy is tracking what one former detective calls a spike in summer thefts. Regency Animal Hospital in Lexington is one of about half a dozen businesses broken into over the weekend. And it is the second veterinary office in that group. They came through a back door situation, uh, just ripped a door off the, the wall, basically. Then they came up front. Clearly, it's evident that they came in, got a cash drawer, removed some cash, stuff off the shelves that would, would have been there that could be resold, and made an exit towards the rear. Dr. Mark Dobbs says thieves took flea medication, heartworm prevention tablets, shampoos, and soaps out of his veterinary clinic overnight. Every cabinet door, every drawer, everything was open. In the last two days, thieves have broken into two animal hospitals. Lexington police say people busted locks on units at Space Center Storage on Newtown Pike. Others were told broke into an acupuncture center. More thieves into a daycare on Wellington Way. Former Lexington police detective Don Evans says business owners need to be vigilant and watch out for each other. It's just not unusual to, to see a spike in certain areas of crime as the weather gets better. One of the storage centers broken into overnight told us they do have surveillance video and they are handing that over to police. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Tonight at 6, you'll hear more from former Lexington detective Don Evans. He's advising business owners about what to do this summer to keep burglars at bay. State police are still trying to track down a semi truck driver who they believe intentionally crashed into one of their cruisers. Our county by county coverage begins in Laurel County. State police say early Saturday morning, a trooper was sitting at a stoplight in London when the truck slammed into the back of the car twice. Now, state police are trying to identify exactly who that driver is. State police say they found a stolen semi that had been burned out earlier today in Laurel County, but are unsure if it was the one involved in that crash. And in Anderson County, we now know the name of a woman killed in a weekend crash. It happened last night on the Bluegrass Parkway near Lawrenceburg. The Anderson County coroner says 70 year old Beverly Minor of Lexington was killed when the car she was riding in ran off the road and into an embankment. The 19 year old driver was thrown from the car and taken to UK with non life threatening injuries. The U.S. government no longer has the authority to collect bulk phone records after parts of the Patriot Act expired at midnight. Lawmakers are now scrambling to resume the controversial surveillance program that many say is essential for our national security. Craig Boswell has the latest from Capitol Hill. The Senate is considering a House bill that would overhaul how the National Security Agency gathers U.S. phone records to search for terrorists. We're changing a program that didn't have a problem and didn't need to be changed. Lawmakers refused to consider the same legislation eight days ago, but are now searching for an alternative plan after Kentucky Senator Rand Paul blocked a vote to extend the controversial Patriot Act. I'm not going to take it anymore. I don't think the American people are going to take it anymore. The GOP presidential candidate is leading the campaign to permanently stop the bulk collection of U.S. phone records, a practice that former NSA contractor Edward Snowden first revealed in his WikiLeaks documents. Paul faces opposition even from a number of fellow Republicans who believe the program is essential for national security. We shouldn't be disarming unilaterally as our enemies grow more sophisticated and aggressive. The new legislation, known as the USA Freedom Act, would prevent the NSA from gathering phone records, but would allow the agency to search records held by phone companies and would preserve other less controversial surveillance programs. 
Craig Boswell, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The White House issued a statement urging the Senate to make sure this, quote, irresponsible lapse in authorities is as short-lived as possible. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. It was a site used to dump radioactive material. Now, after 38 years in state control, the final step to clean up the Maxi Flats disposal site in Fleming County is about to be taken. WKYT's Hillary Thornton was in Fleming County today, where state leaders gave an update on that project. Today marks the final step towards a permanent solution for what Governor Steve Bashir calls a very bad situation that the state inherited here in Fleming County. In the three decades since the Commonwealth purchased this site, state agencies have been working with the Federal Environmental Protection Agency to ensure its proper closure and its long-term care. Today marks the groundbreaking of the final cap, which includes five geosynthetic layers encompassing the site, which is about 55 acres. Those layers will then be covered by about 860,000 tons of dirt. Properly closing off the radioactive waste, but also closing what they say has been a nightmare for this community since 1963. The safety and health of the people in this area was at stake. And this low grade radioactive material, uh, if it seeped into the water, if it, you know, there were a number of things that could happen. And so we worked very hard to make sure it was all contained. And now this is the final step that will be taken with this permanent cap. And now the people in this area can feel uh, safe that things are, are over with. They can go on about their lives and quit worrying about maxi flats. Now, this final cap is set to be completed in the fall of 2016. And a short time after that completion, the state will then enter into a monitoring period that will last 100 years. In Fleming County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The cost of this project is $35 million, and about half of that was approved in Governor Bashir's 2012 budget plan. He says the rest will come from a trust fund created for the project. The crowded field for the 2016 Republican presidential nomination is continuing to grow. Senator Lindsey Graham officially kicked off his campaign this morning in the small town of Central South Carolina, where he grew up. Graham says his focus is on tackling foreign policy, saying, saying that he wants to put at least 10,000 more U.S. troops into Iraq to help stabilize that region. Meanwhile, Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton is getting some company in the presidential primary. Former Baltimore mayor and Maryland governor Martin O'Malley announced Saturday that he's jumping into the race. O'Malley kicks off his presidential bid with trips to Iowa and New Hampshire. He is the third Democrat to enter the race behind Clinton and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. New numbers from the American Society of Plastic Surgeons show more and more people are having plastic surgery after massive weight loss. Procedures such as thigh and upper arm lifts and lower body lifts have all increased. Marley Hall has the story. Ann Hansen went from this to this in five years, dropping a total of 170 pounds through diet and exercise. I thought through all this hard work and sweat and blood and tears that I would have the fairy tale ending at the end of weight loss, and I didn't. The 54 year old was left with sagging skin. She had surgery on her arms, abdomen, and breasts. But at the end of the day, when I got undressed, I was always reminded of who I used to be. New numbers from the American Society of Plastic Surgeons show Anne is not alone. Procedures related to massive weight loss, such as tummy tucks and lifts of the thigh, upper arm, and breast, are increasing. There's been a rise clearly over the past several years in bariatric surgery. Experts say that increase in weight loss surgery is fueling the plastic surgery trend. Last year, nearly 45,000 patients who lost large amounts of weight had plastic surgery to reshape their bodies. What I hear from patients all the time is until they've actually had their plastic surgery, their journey is not complete. Yeah. Yes. Ann says the plastic surgery completed her transformation. I had so much more confidence and I was just so pleased with everything. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. 
The Apple Watch is gearing up to be Apple's most successful product debut, according to a global equities research report. Since the device first went on sale in April, Apple has received 7 million orders in total and shipped 2.5 million watches so far. Apple is expected to deliver about 5 million Apple Watches by the end of the quarter. This would beat the company's previous new category debuts of the iPod, iPhone, and iPad. It appears screeners with the Transportation Security Administration failed in undercover tests designed to challenge their ability to identify explosives or weapons. According to a government official, so-called red teams with the Department of Homeland Security pose as passengers trying to pass through security with the explosives or weapons. The official confirmed TSA officers failed 67 out of 70 tests to get the items through. A Homeland Security spokesperson says they are constantly Constantly testing their officers and enhancing their capabilities and techniques as new threats evolve.